Hey, people of the world, welcome to this edition of The Sharp Social Herb of Positivity. We say a special thank you to everyone out there who has ever come into this shop and been kind and social and positive, and no more so than this incredible human being. I used to say wonderful, but I decided to say incredible because sometimes you just got to up it. She upped it, I upped it, we all upped it. Up it, brav, yeah? This incredible human being is April Barlow. Hey, Good morning. Good and dark, my lady. <laughs> yes, and uh, sorry, April, you are quite an extraordinary person. I'll, you can tell this to these people. I don't know if you quite, might be quite bashful. I've seen lots of your art over the years. Uh, I've seen your new display over at the Foxham, Foxham Inn, Freddy's Place. Which way we go to? Oh, the, oh, this will come out in a few weeks time, so we would have been. Let's hope it's been good. Can you imagine if it wasn't? We could do another one, we could do a post. Anyway, April, tell, tell people about yourselves, come on. Well, hello, um, my name's April Barlow. My trade is April Fool. Um, I was born in April, my name is April. Uh, she no fool. And, um, and I, I, I stumbled on April Fool partly because I, I can be a little forgetful. Um, a lot of my work contains a little twist of, of cheeky humour. Um, but also, I quite like the idea of the fool, the, the kind of, the old, almost Shakespearean idea. Shakespearean is also part of the Italian tradition yes. of um, Pantalone and people like that, you know, that... that, that... Yes. And then if you, because we do, can do, do forum theatre where we have a character that's also in traditional forum theatre, it's called traditional, uh, the, the fool, or, although um, has had other names, because it's usually me. There are so. some wonderful Venetian masks, I quite fancy. That's what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so the, I, I like that idea because the fool was a creature who was allowed to speak truth to power. That's it. Um, but only if they delivered it with good humour. So I try and sort of walk that line. Yeah. So you're, what you're saying is in hidden within these pieces of art, is it? Sometimes. Is it quite subtle? Sometimes. Because that's sometimes exciting. Now I'm, I'm more just, excited by it. Sometimes I'm just playing with aesthetic pleasure. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I'm just making a lovely pair yeah. look like a lovely pair with a salacious pun in a title for a, for a, for a giggle, and there's no more to it. <laughs> oh, and goodness. sometimes I'm just playing what all these lovely materials can do, and, and, and communicating pleasure to the world. And <laughs> well, you communicated it to me right now. I've Thank got you. something, well, I sold, a, I sold a painting called Nice Pair, mm. and they were just pairs that you can eat, yeah. But maybe. Yeah. But, um, but no, okay. sometimes I made one, um, of, um, a beautiful view of the docks, and it, it and it has a, a sign of it in the bottom saying Brexit sorted. And I don't, go, I'm not going to go on about Brexit one way or the other. My message was sort it out because I'm bored. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just, and I think, I, I try and think, like, you know, how a lot of people might feel that they're just bored. Yeah. But, but that's partly, that's deliberate. And then the whole thing about politics, whether it's on a macro or a micro scale, or sometimes, uh, depending on which town council you happen to be having a, a battle with at, at any given time, it's on an absurd scale, yeah. a ridiculous scale. We have people who uh, somehow believe that to, to be... Um, to be uh, part of a, a council and or a, um, the, yeah, the idea of, of speaking truth to power and all that, that Brexit and all those, those machinations are very deliberately there to put us off. Because if you study the detail, not only would people like David Cameron just be arrested and put in prison because they're just, you know, it's disgraceful, it's disgraceful. But Boris Johnson, uh, all that things that Dominic Cummings has been saying about those things, about the things that were so, so important at the time, totally betrayed even, even the right wing or anyone else that thought um, it was a good idea. Look what happened to Northern Ireland. So actually you can't speak enough truth to power. I mean, they don't like it.
it, it so more be, art with fun. So sometimes uh, it's quite rare that I'll put something political in my work. That was a bit of a one-off, and mm. but I, I sometimes think that I, I, absolutely, you know, all of that is so depressing, and I think sometimes it's nice for art to remain a, a space where we can be uplifted um, and enjoy something nice to look at or beautiful to look at or engaging to look at and have a giggle. And often the titles are encouraged to make you go, oh, oh yeah, that's quite funny. Because I don't, I also, the full thing is I, I, I'm afraid of people thinking that I would take myself too seriously. Yeah, I think yeah. you should take the work seriously and work hard. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. should take yourself seriously. I agree. No, I, I mean, and, I'm a fan of your stuff. I like your stuff. Sorry to cut across you, but yeah, I get it. I get it. Exactly. It's, a, it's a, it, because once you start showing or you start sharing, whether it's a song or film, it doesn't matter what it is. Once you put yourself, unfortunately, in this society, you can be perceived as being well, who do they think they are. Yeah. But in fact, if we were to trace what what really the, the purpose of art was, if we go back to cave people, mm-hmm. they didn't do it necessarily for the aesthetic to, to decorate caves. They were Art was used as a learning tool. To, and a, to, a tool to, of communication. To, totally communication. So communication and understanding and education. Yeah. Stimulating it. And it was done in colours, but that was what was there. And it was to show the tribe or the children, this is what you hunt, this is how you do it, these are the weapons, yeah. this is what, this, these are the animals we've got to keep away from. Um, and a legacy. You need to create something that will last after you're not yeah, there. But then, yeah, but then again, you see, here's, here's the thing. It's also been used to sell propaganda, like um, religion. You know, look at Michelangelo. He was an outcast. He was, uh, I think, a, 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 a well-known drinker, whatever, whatever. He preferred men, I think, than, than uh, women in his sexual preference. Uh, I, and uh, outcast society. Leonardo, definitely, that rings too well, much. Well, well, here's the thing, though. Who did the Sistine Chapel? Right. Sistine Chapel. This is how hip- hypocritical. Uh, organised religion is. So this geezer that was ostracised because of his day-to-day dalliances, although if you were to read the sexual abuse um, reports for many of the organised religions, the Church of England and the Catholic Church, you wouldn't let your kids walk past the door of a church, let alone go in. Anyway, that's for next week's <laughs> podcast. Point being is, art has been used to, to convince people, in that case, that God existed because a homosexual painted it on the wall. Or the ceiling. Now, I'm not decrying homosexuals, please no, don't I think that. No, I see what you're saying. Do you know what I'm saying? In one minute you're saying, minute. the church is saying, yeah. you can't, they're wrong. And it's like, actually, mate, you're yeah. the best person for this. So if you paint that there, these people, by the way, the up there has been what? It's been built because of the ego of humanity. I think it feeds into humanity. a concept that we used to talk about in art history, which you can paraphrase as the mythology of genius. And, yeah. and what you're describing is how that becomes perpetuated because... There's a great intellectual snobbery amongst the powerhouses that has yeah. always existed, yeah. where something unforgivable is suddenly forgivable if you are yeah. a genius. Yeah. That's the same with politics. And 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 that that sort of has, yeah. has followed through. Yeah. So well, you know you're finally what you like because you're the best of the best. Yeah. But if you happen to be gay and just normal, yeah. then forget it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it, absolutely, uh, it's, that's a shame. And and, and thank and goodness here, that we live but, in a well, slightly well, better world. Do you think, not there yet. I don't think so. Mm. I, don't, I think that yet. if you're Dominic Cummings, you can literally mm. test drive your car, yeah, with your kid in it, mm. so say, mm. when you think that you might have not got the visual uh, capacity to do so. You wouldn't get your wife to drive and you'd be in the passenger seat, just make sure you, your eyes are okay. Well, that whole thing's just bizarre. Well, it's bizarre, it's it is absolutely, and it was but accepted, and who let him get away with it? I Boris just, Johnson. I think that the public are Jeez, brighter. Jeez, I'm not so air-rated. I think the public are brighter than they give them credit for, and, yeah. you know, a lot is said of, oh, well, if it's all right for him, it's all right for me. Most public don't think that. They think, well, he's embarrassed himself, yeah, silly yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. But... They're still saying to their yeah. family, but you look after yourself yeah. and you look after your community yeah, and each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. So we broadly, we're not daft, we know what to do. And, and the attention that we give it is so tiny. It's on the news and you go, oh, what a knobby knobhead. And then you go, anyway, what's for tea? Yeah, but you meanwhile, exactly, but this is my point. I guess this is why... That's I'm, why we're bored. <laughs> right, we're, we're deliberately made bored and we're also simultaneously... We are actively destroying our habitat. We have been, I've been banging out about this for now 24 years, about the climate emergency. Do people not get that? How they think they've got time to build new circuit, uh, distributor roads or, 
or um, try and cheat their way into getting loads of houses built in, in Wiltshire without really the public say so, in a time when we need a, to locally source our food because we can't trust. Because this place is going to be completely isolated. Imagine the, it, it locked down fifth and six, yeah? When, when we can't get stuff from abroad, what are we going to do? We're going to desperately start looking at our county farms and thinking, oh, we better start growing just the amount of food that we can survive to, to sustain the people in Wiltshire, right? Well, the, the, the waste... You know, that's also it's, a it's, thing, yeah, it's, yeah. it's horrendous, and you know, there's a lot of attention given to wokeness, and and in a way, it's good that young people have found a voice in the language, in a way of discussing doing the right thing. Um, it, it it does feel like new packaging to old ideas. If if, if you talk to people who grew up in the war, they understood rationing, they understood yeah, yeah, recycling, yeah. they understood. You also understand using, murder on a mass scale. Yeah. We're not the ordinary citizens who are just doing their best to cope oh, with yeah, it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What I'm saying is they literally had a reality that said at any given moment, yeah. people from another bit of dry land over there will drop explosives on your house yes. and kill you. Whilst yeah. at the same time, 13 million, they reckon, 13 million people were executed in... Mm. We're talking to you about art. Oh, there you are, April 4th. Yeah. Look where we've got to. We've got no, to Auschwitz. We've gone, down, we've gone down a rabbit hole. Because it's that important. Here's the bit. I actually think art is really quite important. And it's not about taking yourself too, the one taking yourself too seriously. I mainly paint flowers. Why? Because I just can't paint anything else. I'm a bit crap. However, I still maintain the, I don't, I'm not that bothered that I don't do it. Do you get me? As a process. So for me, art in any form, whether it's poetry, I don't care what it is, photography, it helps you as an individual sort yourself out, express a cathartic experience. And you don't need an excuse to do it. No. You, you, you are very good and you can sell it. I get, I'll buy you stuff all day long. It's that good. I'm, I'm so, I know that there's, well, there's, it's practice, isn't it? It's not really practice as in, it's hard work, it's investment, it's 10,000 hours and the rest. Yeah, and, really? I, and, and you know, I, I think most artists would say, I mean, I have imposter syndrome about it all the time. Yeah, I'm about sure, I'm sure Michelangelo definitely Leonardo did. Or and Van Gogh, he only sold two paintings. If, if something's good enough, if something's... Yeah, and, and often, you know, the price that ends up on a piece of work is pitched at, I hope, to be worth about the same as any other trade person. I mean, yeah. most of the people that I put myself on a level with of course. are... are Painters and decorators and plumbers, you know, yeah, people. Yeah. But of course, what I produce isn't nearly as useful. <laughs> ah, okay, well, let's, so let's, let's so, I, so I agree with you because here's the thing: what do plumbers and sewage workers and all the people that we couldn't do without, and the builders and, and the tradespeople, what do they do when they have gone out? They come back into their shelter. And it's all sorted. The plumbing sorted. The walls, the paint, and the decorator sorted. What do they then do usually? Well, have a beer and a nap. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but what do they also do? What do they surround themselves with? What do they turn on to stimulate themselves? The, to, the, the TV. The TV. But they, they usually put up paintings yeah, and okay. stuff on the wall. What is it? There's the importance. If you see, you know, have you ever done one of those? We do it with young people sometimes. The you can only take X amount of people onto a desert island. Who are you going to take? And, you know, sometimes people go straight for all the practical things, doctors, you know, blah, 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 and medical people get, right, engineers, whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's interesting when it starts to come to the value of having creative people, because the great thing about creative people is that because their brains, uh, some people, you know, get quite narrow, but, in, but the whole process of being creative allows you to be perpetually creative. So in any situation, you can normally come up with a creative solution. You have to come, it's not like, huh, oh, I'll do this by rote. So the actual flow of creativity in that flow state is absolutely, and I think you know what I'm talking about, when you're in the flow state doing your art, or even just in life, we feel it and everything is just so. It has an intrinsic, and it definitely, I mean, you know, let's face it, uh, Van Gogh, I think, sold two paintings in his lifetime. Obviously, yeah, his brother, that. if that, yeah. exactly. His brother, Theo, paid was his patron, yeah. right? When he, can you, I mean, whatever it might be worth now, I remember when the irises sold for 26 no, million. No, it's, it's, it's unimaginable. 
And he's probably the best example of this concept of the mythology of genius. Yeah. I mean, really, he was a guy who had mental health difficulties. Probably, if he was diagnosed, he would have a form of schizophrenia. Yeah. Um, and his brother knew he struggled and supported him. Yeah. And he made a few paintings, yeah. which were fairly avant-garde, yeah. um, taking you know, post-modern, post-impressionist yeah. painting to the next level, yeah, yeah, yeah. heightened by his emotions. And because and of the absence. tragedy of that story, and uh, uh, it, it's become, and now his, his images are ubiquitous. They're on cape tins. That you know, yeah, they're, yeah. they're everywhere, and and bright and sold as joyful. But he he just had this passion to just keep working, keep trying. Hey, do you know? Isn't it amazing? You're right. That it, only ten years before he died. Only ten years. Mm. Ten years before he died, he start, started painting. Yeah, if you look at his, his, his trajectory, you put, when he goes to the south of France, his Arles, isn't it? when he goes to the south of France, the colours must have been yeah. intoxicated. I mean, there were studies from when he was younger, when he was, he was trying to learn to paint, and, and he painted in quite a, a traditional style, with, you know, very similar to for the, the subject matter, and he, he, he the potato eaters, and he painted quite humble people. That wasn't, that wasn't when he was younger. That was literally in the last ten, yeah, ten, last 10 years. I was to learn about how dates were. No, just, just, I'm just, I'm I'm just, no, I really don't. Went to Goldsmiths, no. it's all me thematically. Yeah, 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 no, I'm just think, thinking. Huh? Yeah. What? Oh, cool. Do you want to get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea? Thank you. Sorry about this. It's all right. She knows I think it'll roll with it, literally. Um, the, the, that he only started painting, I didn't know that he did anything when he was a kid. He was a, 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 well, a, a, he was a pastor, wasn't he? he was a, he lived in England at one stage. Yeah. Right. I don't think, so in my knowledge yeah. of him, he actually just took up painting. The potato eaters and all those things that were in the last 10 years of his well, life. there you go. Well, that's what I'm saying. Think about the acceleration. That, they, that was almost bromide, wasn't it? It was like a bromide. What do you call it? With brown and, um, and white. Um, what's it called? Sepia. Sepia. Thank you. Bromide. Okay. What do I mean? What the hell am I talking about? Bromide? Isn't that what something put in your drink? Maybe they put it in my drink. Anyway, the idea is that you, yeah, that he went from that, also travelled, didn't he? Because he started off in Holland, but ended up down in the south of France. So the colours and the, and the surroundings and the lifestyle and everything yeah. else. He was hanging out with Gauguin, wasn't he? Yeah, not very long, but yeah. Yeah, and you know, he was getting, well, he was getting to the to eat it or wherever yeah, it was, wasn't it? He so they had all those colours in there. Yeah. And buying the paint, the paint was immense. And, well, that, and the, the, the expense of that, you okay. know, people, it was, it, he would have spent money on that over his, over his oh, food, over his lodgings. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but so, so, no, we talked, so, essentially, this is still going back to the idea of A, bless you, not take yourself too seriously, be putting a bit of humour in what you do, and I get it. And, I, and I, so I've gone from being like, yeah. actually, art's really important. It can be dismissed, or but actually, or can be awe inspiring and politically motivating, and so say, controlling. That's why art is using its various forms to sell cars and political but, mythology. But it's easy to dismiss the importance of just of just raising a smile. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why, why, you know, that, that, that's not unimportant. No, I agree. I think that, there's the, the, that in the great sort of arc of what we can do, do away with, we could do away with HS2 and stuff like that. We don't need it. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's continuing our demise. But um, lots of extra housing or, you know, why, for instance, the, the, I really find it quite interesting because we talk about food waste and that's appalling and the landfills in this country are appalling. Not, I'm not blaming anyone. I'm just saying we need to think of a better way to run our societies but the idea that people have more than one house now don't answer me I don't, you might have 20 houses what I'm saying is a principle if people weren't allowed to have two houses more than one house until everyone had one a we wouldn't have because this is the problem people keep wanting to build it's like you don't get it our soil and everything else is kaput from all the organophosphates from all sorts of poisoning, from all sorts of... It's just like, get it, people. We are in a disaster situation. We're in a house where the downstairs is on fire. That's literally the situation. We're not... Uh, OK, listen, why do you think we should have an extension bill? The house is on fire. I was thinking maybe we could get some new curtains. And then, the house you are in is on fire. Do you know what I mean? That's how desperate it is. The house is on fire that we are living in. 
And yet people are going, well, we can just like, no, 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 it's vitally important that everyone goes, vroom, concentrate on the real thing, on the actual real things that are important. I think art does help us do that. Not that it doesn't mean that every piece of art, I mean, I love this, but what it, what it may inspire you to think is up to the beholder of the, whoever looks at it. It makes me think of children's playground. Yeah, but it, yeah, but here's the thing, Terry Buchanan, who did it, absolutely fantastic, very diverse artist as well. I wonder how many hours he spent doing that, getting lost in the flow of doing that, making it all work, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? No other, other concerns in the world, but to focus that, that's really healthy for the individual. It's very mindful, or, but until it goes wrong, yes. then you can that's have the a other thing, then you little bit of some, tantrum, me too. maybe. Yeah, <laughs> 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 and then you're gonna, sometimes you have two or three paintings on the go, and, you, and I, I, I refer to it as, I, I've fallen out with that one. <laughs> and then we have to make up. I have those of these little relationships with them and move them around until, until I'm happy-ish. Yeah. Or the deadline just yeah. comes upon me. But it's, no, it, 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 is a, it is a joyful practice. It's a luxury. Sometimes I can't get round to it for weeks and then sometimes I'll paint a lot. It's out of yeah. family. I have, yeah, yeah. you know, commitments. Um, Does it come to you or do you, or, or do, or, I mean, do you do commissions as well? Do people say, yeah. can you? Yeah. yeah, I do commissions um, and I've enjoyed those. Uh, from people who have seen my style and understand that I, I can't, perform, I can't work outside what I'm experienced at and then charge money. So, for example, I don't, I, I don't have any talent for drawing, doing portraits of people and animals. And it's not that I couldn't draw a face, it's just, it's, it wouldn't be what perhaps people might expect. Whereas landscapes, seascapes, townscapes, yeah. still lives. But I like the idea of uh, something like a, a still life, even going back to the Dutch masters, yeah, having a few little secrets or meanings yeah, in, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, like you know, the pomegranates and the, the plate and the spoon that are in that painting means something to me. And, yeah. You know, so, so those those things are art within the art. Mm. Mm, I like it. So we're going to put some stuff from your website. You've got a website, haven't you? I have it. Uh, it's a little bit. Um, don't worry about tired. it. Doesn't yeah, matter because what we're going to do is we're going to put some paintings or some examples of the paintings. So filling the whole screen, am I right? The, the, the ones on my website are pretty, are pretty old actually, but the, 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 I'll, I'll go for it. Um, okay. But the ones on the uh, there's, there's, Instagram and the Twitter are a bit newer. But no, no, so just, can you give those details? Because we will course. get people to look at your Instagram and everything on, on this I'm thing. I'm very good at keeping up with it. Well, no, but we can A, stimulate it hopefully because you can put the link, but you can also take some examples. Is that right, Rebecca? Yes. Excellent. Is there anything else you'd like to say, young lady? Having me. No, thank you. Because listen, what I also want to say on behalf of Candy Arts for sustainable development, work out what sustainable development is, everyone, because you get the art bit, surely. Uh, there's fantastic workshops you've been doing, you and Kirsty. The just the joy, this bio tapestry, this bio tapas tree <laughs> that we've got. That it's just we, when this when this when we put it up, we'll be filming that and talking about that as we do it. We've also got your interview with Donna. Although she she not she not the thing in the sound goes, but anyway, she she edited it already, so we might even combine the two. But it's really impressive that. It's it's it. I, I felt very very privileged to stumble in here, and and as you know, we we sort of met ten years ago when I first started, and just you coming into this space and being in the town, it's like oh hello, what are you doing, and oh well that and, and it's it it was a lovely thing for me to make art in the community again and. And, to, and, and you were so welcoming and friendly and just let me get on with it, it was... Well, you know, I think it's, a, it's, it's one of those ones, isn't it? I, I, you're right, I've, been, I've seen you right over the years and know you're very accomplished, but it's actually a joy to know that you would come in and just get on with it and just do it and people loved it. Look at all the output, it's amazing. It's been really nice. I mean, the National Curriculum says that, you know, the teacher of art should display the work to celebrate the achievements of young people. And why should that be limited to the classroom? Yeah. This is, is a classroom for Chippenham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so the teacher at the end of term has to put up a nice display. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> when, 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 we the, when we put up the tapestry, it's not, and, obviously it's not a tapestry, but when we put it up, I've got to say, that's really exciting because that feeling, it's taking, yeah. That fluttering of, I 
copied that. Yes. Never goes oh, away. I love it. When the young people, anyone, you're right. They've come, so for, for all the workshops we've done with Ray Melody and Alex Moran and Lucia Lovett and uh, Lucy Dowling. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. People spending whole weeks doing different bits of art. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. And then they put them up and then you see them bringing their friends or bringing their parents or whatever in to see the little gallery. Right, that's our next stage there. Everybody, you have to end it with this bit there because this is where I say everybody, the very wonderful April Barlow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.